Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the channel. So this is a follow up video uh, following my tune up of the EQ6R Pro. Um, so I did a full strip down and rebuild of this mount replacing all of the bearings. And what I want to go through now is how to now tune this to remove all of the backlash and get it running the best it can. So I'm really hoping that I can improve on the numbers I had before. As I say, out the box this was about 0.8, uh, it wasn't a bad mount at all. Um, I did a lot of adjustments with PhD2 and PEC training and I used to regularly get sort of 0 0.4, 0 0.5, uh, maybe on a poor night I might be up to 0.6 but I was getting really good solid guiding with this mount even at long focal lengths with off axis guider. So why did I uh, decide to work on this mount? Well I bought a second hand HEQ5 that was very stiff in the axis. Um, I didn't know how old everything was in it and I decided to hyper tune that. The results I got from uh, working on that mount were so good I just wanted to do the same for this. The big differences were that for balancing um, it was so much easier. There was absolutely, it was left with no stiction at all and I wanted the same for this mount and I've now got that so I'm really happy. So now the, the thing is is to get all the backlash out and to tune it so that um, it's going to basically guide the best it can. So I'm going to go through the processes of what I do. And I've read and been suggested to me lots of different ways that people do theirs. This is the way I do it, um, So, but it's not the only way, um, but it's the way I do it and it works for me. So I'm going to share that with you and hopefully if you use it, it will work for you too. But right, we'll, uh, we'll just get on with it. So my name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. First thing I'm, I've done, uh, the caps are missing off of the uh, float nuts that go to the actual worm drives. And you want to make sure that these are done up to a point where there's no movement. And um, if you see here, and I'll wiggle the axis, you can see the axis moving up and down a little bit there. And by tightening this uh, float nut, that will stop that from happening. So you want to tighten it up, but you don't want to go too tight, because if you tighten it too tightly, it will start to bind and it will restrict its movement. So you just want to nip it up to the point where there's no movement and then just maybe slacken it off just a little bit. Once you've adjusted this, we then need to uh, look at the actual uh, head of the mount itself. So what I'm going to do is have a feel. And as you can see there, there's a bit of wobble. So we need to tune that out. And we do that by undoing these four nuts here, loosening this worm carrier, and then we have a small Allen key access hole at the bottom here, and one at the top. By undoing this one and doing up the top one, we'll move the carrier up, and that will make the worm gear engage a bit more. We can keep doing that until we find no movement in the worm gear, and then what we can do is slew the mount to make sure there's no binding. If we've got binding, we'll need to reverse that and slacken it off a bit. I've actually had this where there's no binding uh, that's obvious and there's no play. But when I've run a guide assist, it's shown me that there is some binding. So on the graph where it returns back on the ideal line, it actually stops moving south and then moves a horizontal line across and that shows that the worm basically gear has, has stopped moving and it's not moving itself anymore. So you do have a slight bit of binding. So there you can really fine tune it. On the RA side, you might get a good clue of what's going on with that if you use the pet curve. So by recording a pet curve, you can see whether you've got a nice smooth curve. So a lot of people have curves that have jagged bits in them 
that can sometimes be because there's a slight bit of binding or a bit of slop in the gears and a little bit of uh, adjustment could most probably sort that out. So once you've adjusted and you're happy that you haven't got any backlash, the next thing is to actually operate the mount, listen to it, make sure you're not getting any knocking or unusual noises. And as long as you've got no binding, then you're on the right track. If after doing the slewing there's no binding, but you can still feel a bit of play in the deck, or in the axis you're working on, again, undo the worm carrier nuts, make slight adjustment, do the worm carrier nuts up slightly, check, check for slewing, do the nuts up fully, and then check your slewing again and make sure there's no binding. If you're happy at that point, and I always start with a deck, then you can move on to the RA, and the RA is exactly the same process. Just be aware that the adjustments you're going to make are going to be extremely small. One little tip I have is if I've got to the point where I feel that the movements are too big um, and let's say I want to slacken this off which would be this, this would need tightening and this would need loosening I might not loosen this one I might just see if there's any slack in that that I can tighten and I would tighten that a little bit see if it made any difference if it didn't I would then maybe just ever so slightly loosen just literally a sixteenth of a turn, the smallest amount possible and have another feel. Because sometimes moving the two can move it too much and you might find just a small adjustment on one of those grub screws can be enough. And just be very careful that when you do tighten back down the uh, worm carrier it can move it and so it can make a difference. The last final adjustments are very small, so be patient and take your time. Okay, I'm now going to jump into the computer and show you the guiding I was getting and also show you my guide assist uh, backlash um, uh, measurement. I was eventually able to get some stars and actually run some tests. And so starting off, uh, we get a calibration done I would then be guiding on some stars and I would run a guide assistant. And as you can see from my graph here on the uh, declination backlash, it's uh, quite a nice graph and it's showing uh, no significant backlash at all. So I was very happy with that. So then looking at the guiding, um, we can look at the numbers uh, on the RA and the deck. We want these to be fairly close to each other. Um, we can sometimes get good numbers, but if the RA and the deck are a long way apart in their error, um, that can cause misshapen stars too. But as you can see, I was uh, guiding very nicely in the sort of 0.3 uh, region, so I was very happy with that. Um, and uh, I wasn't really making many adjustments. Uh, to get to this, uh, at first the RA was a bit higher. I'd make a small adjustment to the RA and then uh, re-see how things were settling down. So um, this was looking quite nice. I then slewed the mount to a, a different part of the sky and uh, started my guiding again. Um, it started off a little bit higher, uh, but I just left it and let it have a chance to settle down, uh, which it did, and that was quite nice and uh, I just left it running um, as I say it slowly worked its way down from 0.5 back down to sort of the very low 0.4 and then eventually back into the 0.3s so I was uh, very pleased with this result um, and then here I switch to uh, the graph so it's just on one arc second so I can really have a close look at what's going on and uh, once it's all settled down you can see that the uh, movements within the mount are very small indeed. So the next process that I will be undertaking is I will be recording a uh, PEC curve um, and seeing whether adding a periodic error correction can improve things even further. Um, 
the deck is actually around the same kind of level as the RA at the moment. So if I do improve the RA more, I may even look to tweak the deck a little bit more too. Um, and we'll see if we can get these numbers, um, well, even lower. I mean, I'm very happy with point three, but if I can get it to uh, point two, well, that'd be even be even better. But um, as I say, I'm very happy with uh, the guiding as it is, and um, I'm very pleased with the results of all the work that I've done to the mount. So this is the end of the video. I've um, been very happy with the results that I've achieved with the uh, mount, uh, changing all of the bearings, uh, resetting everything, tuning it up. My guiding is better. The mount just feels so much nicer. It's so much easier to balance. Uh, everything is smooth. And I'm just really happy. Um, I do enjoy mucking about with things mechanically, so uh, that does help. But I hope that my uh, video today on the uh, setting up the backlash is something that anyone can do, even if they haven't retuned their mount. They could, uh, if they've got any problems with backlash and things like that, these small adjustments can be done. If you want to follow the video for my complete uh, strip down and rebuild, I'll put a link in the description below and one above my head there, so you can click on that and uh, hopefully follow that through and it can help you out. Uh, I'll put another link above me just in case you have an HEQ5 or know someone that has an HEQ5 because I did a full strip down and rebuild of that mount too. Um, it's very similar but there are a few teeny differences. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope it has helped you and uh, it's to say if there is any questions please let me know. I will be uh, more than happy to help you if I can. All that uh, remains for me to say is until next time, please take care and I wish you all clear skies.